Hello everyone. <coughs> uh, can you all see me? Hi. So uh, today I am going to be teaching you all this mixed media layout and uh, Nathamal will be modding the live today and um, if you have any questions please uh, just let us know and we'll try our best to answer them. So this is like the first time probably I'm doing a layout uh, tutorial. I hope you all are going to like this. Just let me, yes. Okay, so am I in the middle of the frame? I hope so. Okay, so uh, for all of you who are joining just now, uh, I am going to be teaching this mixed media layout and this one I have actually combined two of our collections, the Darcel and the Pretty Mosaic. So here we have this gorgeous collection. All of these collections, I think they're uh, uh, maybe still available in scrapbook.com. You can check these out. And this collection is a beautiful combination of this deep, um, indigo blue and magenta and this one here the pretty mosaic is also has some uh, magenta in it so i thought it would be uh, you know like a very good combination it, it would work together very well so how many of okay we have 31 people joining hi yulia hi gibby Hello. So before we start with anything, uh, I just want to let you know that these molds that you see here, the um, I have used hot glue for these and uh, of course, uh, I have actually prepared my mold already beforehand. The reason being, I will not be able to dry them. Because uh, as you all know, these, this is hot glue. So if I would uh, start drying them with my heat gun, uh, there are chances that I may damage the details. Okay. So this is a short tip for you, small tip for you, that if you're uh, wanting to use hot glue in, uh, in your um, projects to make your molds, to cast, cast your molds, then uh, just uh, prepare them beforehand. And how I uh, uh, did this, I will be sharing it with you with just one of these, but I just wanted to let you know that I've already prepared my molds because uh, in the heating process they may uh, lose the details okay so let me set this aside and i'll just show you how to do it with hot glue you need a good uh, size the the large size hot glue for this uh, a hot glue gun for this and just make sure that when you're using it your hot glue gun has been like um, you've switched it on for a couple of minutes and so that the glue is like uh, really hot in there okay and then just keep it very close to the um, surface of the uh, mold because otherwise what happens is that if you do it from here like suppose if you are dropping it into the mold from a distance what happens is that glue may not seep down into the details okay so just make sure you are really close to the surface and don't worry about your silicone mold it can take up really high temperatures so once you're done with this just fill up everything 
there you go okay now once this is dry then you will uh, go on and remove it and i'll show you what to do next but uh, as of now this is the first thing that i'm doing uh, prior to starting my layout because we need this to dry and you know set so let's get started with our layout i am going to be using this pattern paper from the darcel collection and now uh, I'm pretty sure you all know this, but I'll still cover it uh, for people who might just be beginning uh, with mixed media and everything. So the first thing that you need to do is prime your surface. Okay, this is very important uh, because paper is porous. Okay, and if you uh, uh, if you are planning on using any mediums or you know colors, sprays, mists, etc. What happens is that all the porous material, uh, if you are using a porous material, what happens is it will uh, warp and plus it will be patchy. The, the medium that you are going to use will be patchy. Okay, it will not, uh, because it absorbs it just as, uh, just as you will drop your color onto your page, it will start to absorb it. So your colors will be, look patchy on your page. So the first thing that you need to do is prime your page. Now I am going to use clear gesso. This one here from Finabare. Why clear? You can also use white, but you know when white dries, it dries opaque white. But clear one will dry absolutely clear. And I want the color on my page to show. So I'm going to use the clear gesso here. So uh, this tool that I'm using is from Redesign with Prima. And it's a fabulous tool if you are, if you want to apply a really thin layer of gesso on your um, pages. That's very even actually without the hassle. So I like using this. It's once again silica, silicone. So there you go. Just make sure you cover all the areas. And remember, the thinner the layer of your gesso, the quicker it will dry. Okay. So now that we are done with this, I'm just going to keep my gesso aside. and heat dry it this paper has a lot of details already you can see we have a gorgeous um, lace pattern here and here and a lot of texts and everything so uh, you do not need to worry uh, about adding a lot of texture on this page okay and just a second the next thing that i'm going to do is add some stamping and uh, you'll see i did add do this step in my original uh, layout as well so i'm going to show it to you but you will see there is actually no use of doing this because it's such a dark paper even black ink will not show properly but of course when you're looking at something uh, you know in front if it's in front of you you will see these details but in pictures not everything is you know uh, visible so i just randomly stamp my pattern paper And I'll show you something if you see look at this page okay uh, I, I decided to make it in the center the cluster in the center and but I wanted it to look like you know not just um, confined to the center so I decided to give it some uh, flow to the whole thing that is why I am stamping when I'm stamping I'm making sure I'm covering uh, the edges from all the four sides so approximately the center of all the four sides because then what happens is that they will come 
you know they will draw your attention to the center all of that color and everything I prefer to uh, add my stamping uh, before adding any textures because then it uh, you know the textures won't uh, it, it's hard a little hard to stamp over textures but then i do go back in the end once again to uh, re-stamp so now we will be using this stencil by finnabel to add some textures to our page and yeah this is a gorgeous doily stencil i'm not sure if it is still available but if it is, then uh, uh, you should buy it because it's really gorgeous. Okay. So to stencil our, um, use our, uh, for this stencil, I am going to be using 3D gel here. This is, you can use any 3D gel, gloss or matte. I have the 3D gloss gel, so I'm going to be using that, okay? very carefully add this gel medium on your page and I'm just going to you know remove the excess excess alongside because Hi Harshita, Zinia, hello. Hi Kiran. Okay, there we go. And one more over here. gel here uh, because I want to add some foil to my background you know because this is a very deep uh, magenta colored background uh, the thing with this will be that not many colors will show on top of it okay so what do you what you want to do is whenever you're choosing a dark background just think about it for a little while as to which colors will look will uh, you know um, be visible on it so uh, I decided to go with uh, bronzy gold kind of thing and we have uh, these foils by uh, redesign and I'm going to be using this and how you uh, after you've applied your 3d gel make sure it's not when you uh, before adding your foil you have to make sure that it is not you know wet at all so what I'll do is I'll just give it a quick dry with this uh, heat tool. You want to make sure that it does not come off on your finger like so. In the meanwhile, I'll just check your comments. <laughs> Thank you, Zinya. Hi, Gaby. Yes, it's a gorgeous paper. Uh, let me know if you want to see uh, layouts because I'm not sure how many people are interested in making layouts. I don't see a lot of people doing layouts these days. We are uh, like more into canvases and stuff. So, hi, Karen. So let me check. I think a little bit more.
this is very crucial if you're uh, using foil in your page uh, now I'll just show you how it's done just place your foil on top okay do not press too hard okay and now use your heat gun like this you will see that your uh, foil will start to shrink in places can you see that I'm not sure if it's visible and it's hot right now so just be careful don't be like me I'm just going to use a sponge here now let's now this is a quick foiling technique you can always use embossing powders melt them and then uh, put your foil on top or and use a craft um, iron or something that is also a method to do it I do not have a craft iron and embossing powders are a little bit too messy for me so I went with this method I think my gloss gel is not you see how it's come off on some areas it is because it wasn't dry now this is one issue that of course we have in live videos we do not have a lot of time so we have to rush things right but you know wherever it has dried it has adhered completely you can see I'll try doing it again I'm really impatient with this. You need to make sure that your gel is completely dry before doing this. Otherwise, it will happen. What happened with me? Exactly the same thing will happen. Let me show it to you over there. You see how it started to adhere that is because the gel is starting to dry now I may just leave it as it is because I do not want my life to be too long I always struggle with uh, keeping my lives short and sweet show it to you over here and quite hopeful of this area because I think it has dried quite a lot see that okay I hope you can see that now let's rework this area the issue is that if your gel dries completely then also you may have problems so there is like this sweet spot you have to uh, make sure that uh, it's not completely dry and it's not like uh, wet so there is this sweet spot of a couple of minutes but I am still going to work it out okay here we go I am not going to do this area because that is not going to show you see how it's sticking to all the areas okay. 
so this is just a quick method to add foil to your uh, papers oh my god my room is hot literally right now because i use so much of this heat pump okay next what i'm going to do is add some colors on top of this remember we have already used clear gesso so our paper is like almost uh, impervious to these uh, mediums and plus what happens is that it has uh, because gesso will add some tooth to your paper and uh, so your colors show better okay and what colors did i use okay yeah so i'm going to use this liquid acrylic by finnabear have this plastic sheet here I'm just going to add some now next I am going to I do not have a black uh, liquid acrylic actually I finished it so what I'm going to replace that with is this black gesso okay and next just add a little bit of water on your brush and start you know uh, adding color to these areas I'm holding my brush like this and not like this if you can see uh, that is just your personal choice and I'm doing it because it's a little bit quicker and like so okay now keep uh, some paper towels handy when you're doing this because uh, you see this area here you don't want patches like this okay just keep on dabbing wherever you do not like the color you know like patched patchy color or something like that and some color on this side now first i'm adding this color in burnt sienna i don't know how to pronounce that i hope that is the pronunciation but i'm uh, but uh, natamal will be letting you know about all the products and everything so there we go and if you can see, I'm literally connecting these two uh, textured areas here. Can you see? I'm not sure uh, how the light is reflecting on these. But this is how they look. Okay. There we go. Yeah, these are great colors and the best thing about these colors is uh, I'm not sure if everyone know the, uh, knows this they these are actually translucent you know because uh, when you add these colors uh, these acrylic colors do not hide your background completely they will be like uh, you know uh, you'll be add when you add these they'll show their own color but the underneath the background or the details if there are any details or stamping in the background that will also show along with this so just a little bit about these colors these are really great and but even the darkest of the shades will show your background okay so you do not have to worry about uh, whether the, these are acrylic colors and will they be like completely opaque or not so the next thing that i'm going to do is add some water to my gesso here this black gesso guys am i completely visible or not sure uh, is my whole pa entire page visible if ca anyone can let me know okay so uh, now what i'm going to do is add some black on the edges okay so it looks like you know uh, uh, dark to light a little bit of sh shaded dark Just 
let your colors flow and only when you feel like okay uh, i do not need that much of color on my page here only then try to you know uh, use a baby wipe or something to take off the excess okay but let these colors flow because uh, the beauty of a uh, water coloring something comes only when you actually let your colors uh, flow as they want to you know you do not want to restrict their normal movement okay so now that i have uh, i'm satisfied with how this looks i am going to add some splatters and don't load your brush with a lot of water because otherwise uh <laughs> the splatters will be very random and sometimes even uh, dr huge drops you can see big drops out there which is not a problem once again but it's your personal uh, choice if you want it like that it's very good okay i think i'll extend it a little bit over here that's it and adding a little black once again okay if there are big pools of uh, water uh, on your uh, these water co these colors don't start to dry them because what happens is that uh, adding a lot of heat to your project will unnecessarily you know uh, warp your page so just pick up a little uh, pick up that water and now uh, add splatters don't be very uh, just add you know like random splatters here and there when doing a watercolor page uh, adding splatters add, adds a lot of details you know so i like doing this step now next start to thank you Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, that was my daughter, Natavar. Yes, this technique works with all foils. I um, the mink foils. I'm not sure, but. Of course they are heat reactive so i think all of these foils should work with this and it's a very quick technique to add uh, some foiling to your um, papers that don't have any right Thank you, Shannon. Thank you for joining. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Zina, I just cleaned this table before the live because... Uh... <laughs> yeah, but still, once again, we're back to square one. Thank you, Dahlia. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you for joining, guys. Okay, so it's uh, relatively dry and... I'll leave it to this and we will jump on to our mold here so you see I did this in the start of our video and it has some edges like so here but you can always remove these over spills right with your fingers or just use a scissors or something now using hot glue actually gives like really rustic feel to your uh, molds I'll just show you a couple uh, if you can see these now these are not perfect in any sense okay they have small holes and everything but then this is what uh, i wanted for this page because i want to create something more rust uh, you know vintage kind of so these just added to the 
uh, feel of the page that is why i used hot glue instead of resin because in my original uh, layout i used a resin uh, mold a resin cast for this keyhole and i did not like the finish of it so that's why i used hot glue for these um, flourishes and everything so now i'll show you what i did to uh, th this these uh, resin uh, sorry hot glue uh, molds and what we need is some of this white paint and once again i am using chalk chalk paint okay now i don't i have not used gesso you can always use gesso there is no issue but you will have to water it down okay because uh, otherwise it will be very you know uh, gesso is uh, thick and you may uh, lose a lot of details when doing this step so just a little bit of chalk paint now here is the thing you cannot dry it with heat gun even if you want to dry you have to be like do it for uh, two seconds and remove your heat gun because the reason is because this is hot glue and it will start to melt and lose details so i had to actually make these beforehand and add color because you do not want this to happen to your <laughs> molds okay so after that was dry i added this color burnt sienna and i added this color to this mold here like so okay and once this was once again dry completely okay this is dry to touch you can see i'll just leave this aside for now what i did was just take some of this chalk paint on your fingers just make sure it's you know there's not a lot on it and rub it like so okay there we go you see this so yeah these molds are very beautiful dg thank yeah exactly i was about to say this molds are actually a great value purchase as nathamal said because uh, first things first you have so many options uh, when you are using molds you can use hot glue you can use resin you can use clay but uh, i mean uh, there there's like so many options to use and plus the thing is these molds are you can use them while baking you can also use them in your projects and everything you can use them in jewelry designing and everything so the options are innumerable but the best thing about molds is that if you purchase a few of those uh, classic molds like what i love is these clockwork frames here okay and these flourish like frames uh, uh, like designs this one here and the best thing is this um, keys and keyholes so you will be like you will never have to purchase any embellishments these are like the best investment you can make in your uh, crafting so if you have still not purchased molds then i think you should invest in a couple of good molds okay so now uh, the next thing is at this stage you will want to adhere your uh, uh, this paper to a support a backing because what happens is that this uh, pattern paper you see uh, even we even though we try a lot it still warps a little uh, i have heard i've not tried it that if you add a layer of gesso on back then uh, what happens is that and, and you heat it what happens is that you will uh, overcome a lot of warping but uh, i'm not going to do that it will take me a, a lot of time so what i like to do is at this stage after i'm done with adding colors and textures and everything i like to add a backing to my uh, layouts you can use any kind of chipboards it's uh, or um, you can use some thick um, pattern paper that you have not been using probably and the best thing if you have used some of your pattern paper packs completely this acts as a very good backing okay so if you have used your pattern paper pack completely just rip off this page and add it to your layouts so you can use your complete uh, paper pack okay 
so now what i do usually is take this glue here and i'll just uh, do, do this very quickly but you can be like more precise with this so just make sure you cover the ends i know this is how long has this layer been <laughs> Now make sure you've applied this glue to all the edges and everywhere. You don't have to be like very precise but I'm just showing this to you because you know if I'm showing a layout and I'm not covering everything then uh, I, I'll it will haunt me. <laughs> okay. Now I'll just use this tissue here like this okay and now this brayer just a second guys okay now this brayer what you have to do is just and because i'm not sure if this is dry or not still so i'll just place this tissue and then like this Just place your tissue, uh, uh, when I did it on my uh, layout, everything was dry completely because I did it the next day. So I did not have to place this tissue, but if you're in a hurry, uh, this, just do it like so. have some excess chipboard over here I'll just cut it okay, you see how uh, it's absolutely flat and everything now the next step is just arranging everything and creating a beautiful cluster okay so what we will have to do for this step, just a second. Let's arrange our molds. I just remove this. Okay. So here is everything that we will be needing. Somehow I'm not able to center my whole page here. Okay. So let me see how I placed it. On my original page here there we go um, okay somewhat like this okay and next what you need is some of this pattern paper and uh, this pattern the paper that I'm going to just cut uh, right now I'm going to uh, fussy cut some square pattern papers that will go behind my photograph okay so you do not need to worry what papers you have on hand try to use your uh, scraps I like to uh, you know uh, keep all of my scraps in one place and when I'm uh, using things uh, for such purposes I like to just you know go back to that bin and find papers for these purposes this is not uh, I have this paper on hand that is why I'm using it but you can use any of the papers until the time it's like a little because it will show of course it will show but uh, not that much so you do not have to worry if it is a complete match or not if you have some uh, scrap papers uh, after you've completed your old uh, projects that's the best thing i that is why i keep my scrap papers i do not throw them out because you never know when you use that collection once again so i have this and what i'll do is i'll just cut it in half because that is what i need for my uh, this photograph my photograph is going to be a little small 
so i will not be needing a lot of paper to show then i have this let me see if i want anything else okay, i think this is good enough go like this and where's my photograph just a second you guys I'll just remove the things that I'm no longer going to need because it's unnecessarily confusing me and next uh, if you see on my original layout here I've used a black and white photograph because I thought that it'll uh, you know pop up much better than any other colored photograph and on this uh, layout I am going to be using this photograph now uh, just to give you an example of uh, what all you can use now this photograph has an image of a door that matches very uh, like really nicely with the background Plus, it has a white border all around it. So, uh, I think this should look good on this page. Okay, now uh, another example of a photograph that you can use on such uh, this kind of a layout that is like very monochrome uh, is using a photograph that has colors similar to your, um, you know, the colors that you've used in your stenciling and everything. Uh, the colors that you used uh, to create your background, like I used brown so this has shades of brown so this photograph should also look good on it okay so now my hot glue gun is ready and i should start just assembling this thing here <coughs> okay just like just a second okay so take a scrap piece of chipboard and I like to use chipboard for all of these things because uh, chipboard and glue today I'll be using hot glue but if you want permanent results you should use uh, something of this sort because or fabric glue for instance because uh, the what do you call the glue dots and everything they are a little bit temperature sensitive and uh, depending upon the humidity at your place and everything, they may come off. Okay. Just going to add a little bit of white. Okay. There we go. Now let's add some chipboard on the back here. Just be very careful with the hot glue. I just want enough height so that I can, you know, place my layers and everything on top of it. This is my first layer. Add some. Okay. This is the second layer. And at this point, I'll once again add a little bit of chipboard, a small chipboard. Then the second layer. Now, uh, this uh, adding these uh, papers and everything, they just add a little bit of, you know, dimension to your project, a little bit of detail to your project. Most of these things, uh, you know, uh, adding details and everything is completely personal. But uh, because we are learning here, so I'll just show you what all things you can possibly do. Of course, I cannot cover everything, but I'll try my best. Okay, even while adding these molds, just try to uh, create some dimension. Like I have added these two, if you can see. And I've not, uh, I've, I'm making sure that these ends, 
they are not in line okay you want to create some steps kind of illusion so now once i've added these what i'm going to do is take some of this chipboard once again add it over here and then add your this one and once again if you will see i have made sure that all of these have different uh, levels you know they are ending at different levels they are not in the same plane you need to make sure just to create an uh, some uh, what do we say uh, sorry i forgot but you have to make sure that they are not in the uh, in one same line just a little tip because it creates interest for your eyes okay now next i am going to add some on top here i knew i would reach one or god i'm so sorry okay so there we go our molds are added just add a little bit of white because somehow i feel that You can always go back and retouch your uh, things. There we go. Now, this key one somewhere here. Okay. And if you can see, there are these two circles. Okay. And two of anything on a layout or on a canvas looks a little odd. So I'm adding this tiny circle. This clock circle over here. Just a tip once again. They, it is nothing like it is a rule or anything that you need to follow. But um, just something so that. Okay. Next step is adding some fussy cutting. Uh, you know. Uh, details on your layout. And for this. I have. So here are the fussy cut uh, flowers that I have. I'm going to be using on my page today, and these all are from the Pretty Mosaic collection. Okay, let's get started with this. This big one. I think I should place this big one first. Okay, somewhat like this. Now, once again, I am going to be using some chipboard just so that uh, my this fussy cut uh, pattern it stands a little bit more. Okay, you just need to create the illusion of dimensions. So, uh, like this, I, I've added it a little bit of chipboard, and it looks as if it is lifted from this background. Now this one, I haven't added any chipboard, okay? You just need to make sure that you do a little bit of... And this I'm going to be placing over here, like so. Just remove these. So now what you can see is that this is on the background with no dimension. And this is on top of it. And it looks as if it's, you know... Of course, it's like it's on top of it. So just keep repeating this till the time you're satisfied, till the time you feel that, okay, now this is enough. Uh, yeah. And one more thing of uh, whenever you're adhering your papers or layers, just make sure that you do not add glue on these edges because there are times when you will want to tuck in something and just like I did over here, so you'll have, have to rip off and you know unnecessary trouble. So just try to do this. That whenever you are creating these kind of flares, don't add glue on the edges. Okay. So here we have. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to place my photograph. And see how it all looks. 
okay and there will be is it straight just let me check okay i think it's straight now next is adding some yeah okay so now what we have to do is take out our gorgeous prima flowers and i am going to be using this one today just have a look at how gorgeous these flowers have been you know made gorgeously and i am going to use a couple of these flowers that go with my theme so let's go with this and Now the thing is that when you add dimension, you can see I'm tucking in my flowers in between these layers. I have ample of space because I added chipboard. So I have space for, you know, tucking in flowers in between the layers. Keep on adding hot glue and gluing your flowers. Okay, so next is adding some laces. Now, these look gorgeous and plus, if you see very carefully, they have a pattern similar to the doily uh, stenciling that I did. I do not like to go very random on, my, on the patterns that I'm using on my page, but you can completely do that. For some reason, I like to stick only to like maybe a one or two patterns. Just tuck these laces in a few places and how many of you are excited for the new collections that Prima will be releasing? You are going to love the, uh, the release this time. I am thinking that maybe okay. if you do not like something uh, just add uh, heat and you have used hot glue just try to heat it and it will come off okay so what I want to do right now is do something like this There we go. And next, what I want to do is, um, yeah, add some leaves, some greenery to our page here. Just a second. Hi, Lynn. Thank you so much. Hello, Patricia. Hi, Mishi. Ko. <laughs> absolutely not they are the most beautiful flowers and for a long time when i was not on the prima dt um, uh, i used to literally save my flowers like anything you know i still do them my husband thinks that i'm crazy but yeah uh, prima, uh, whenever you're making something i know we all have our choices and everyone more many people like to go handmade also there is no uh, i but uh, something about prima flowers that when you add them to your projects they instantly uh, you know start looking so beautiful i don't know the reason why but it happens to me all the time step is um, 
adding some details and some uh, stamping once again now as i told you earlier that my stamping wasn't showing so this is what i did uh, later on and i thought i'll just share it with you once again i could have avoided this step but i'll just show you so what i do is i took some chalk paint in white okay and take your stamp this here and dip it in this chalk paint and stamp like so okay even if you do not have white ink it hardly matters just try to you know take out uh, find out various techniques for yourself to cut on your budget so that you can buy more prima flowers okay so now what i did was just stamp using this white chalk paint and it instantly started to show yeah can you all see this there we go and this just adds a uh, a little bit of more texture to your page don't worry if your stamping is not very precise and uh, because ultimately it's a mixed media layout cannot be very precise right so don't worry don't fuss about all these things but here is how i stamp the white on my pages now because i have chalk paint here so what i'm going to do is just add a little bit of water on top of it and make some white splatters oops you can always cover your picture like this okay there we go So our white splatters are done at this point you can also use some of our bronze color here this bronze acrylic paint i think this just a second this is the metallic acrylic paint by finnabare in the color brass hardware okay so you can use this as well to add some more splatters because we have added gold out there and you can just add a little bit of this paint add some water and add some splatters okay so there we go with our splatters now the next thing is adding some details with uh, art stones and some glitter of course and our layout will be done some beads of course of course of course, of course. how did i forget these beads so these are the memory hardware pearls four by frank garcia and what you just need to do is a drop of hot glue and add these they look really gorgeous on your projects and they add so much you know not just the details so much elegance to your work so if you haven't if you do not have these uh, pearls in your stash they are a good you know investment because you get so much of pearls i don't think it's easy to finish all of these I have a lot of hot glue strands right now. And there we go. Maybe one more. There we go. Okay. And now I'll just add some art stones. whenever you are doing your mixed media work or anything just make sure you have at least two bottles of clean water uh, with you because 
uh, you know you will need them to just clean your brushes again and again and try to uh, use a different uh, jar for black uh, and in darker colors and then uh, sorry uh, try to uh, use one jar just to do first rinse and the second jar for the second rinse so that way you will uh, always end up with a clean brush every time and you will not have to run to your sink again and again to get clean water okay now let's add some uh, art stones with the help of our uh, 3d gel i still have to add some leaves but i think i'll do this step first because i suppose we are already too late i have exceeded <laughs> one hour once again i think i talk a lot maybe that's why is that so Now, when you are adding art stones, okay, try to uh, focus more on the um, nooks and crannies of your work. Okay, that is where these art stones look most beautiful on. Okay. And then you can of course, you know, just uh, wipe off the excess art stones that you ha have on your... Um, brush like i did okay and the underneath areas like these okay and mix in uh, a variety of art stones when you're doing of course uh, these are some things that i do that is why uh, that is why i'm telling I'm telling these to you so it's not like you have to do it like this only okay i just want to make sure it's not like you have to do it like this you you should have your own original style and you should do what you want to do and not what you're being told especially when it comes to art i'm telling you the things that i do and many people have different thinking about everything they may not agree with everything that i'm uh, showing you here but yeah this is um, what i do that's why i'm just telling it to you Okay, now, uh, right now, my, just a second, you just need to make sure uh, you touch up your flowers and everything with these things because uh, if you leave out uh, certain areas, especially, or if you leave out certain elements, then it, they do not look at the, you know, the, they do not look tied to the whole uh, project so just make sure you just touch up a little bit of these this and that okay now that we are almost done with this i'll just add a couple of leaves and some glitter now because my uh, gel is still okay i have a lot just a second so because this is still wet it will take some time to dry so this is the time you can add some glitter and use uh, use glitter very sparingly we have a lot of gold out here already now this glitter is from finnabel once again i forgot to tell you this is from the luminous collection and this collection uh, has all the possible kind of golds that you can think of in glitter so I highly, highly, highly recommend this one here. Okay, and once again, uh, I, I told you that I did not add leaves. Now, this is the last step, of course, and we will add leaves to just tie up this whole thing together so that it looks These leaves are also from the collection, but uh, I feel that if you have some leaf stamps, okay, or if you have some leaf dyes, uh, you can always cut them in watercolor uh, packing, uh, watercolor paper, 
add some watercolor on top and use those leaves okay because um, I think they uh, they will look much better and plus you will not have to fussy cut that much okay so what I do when I fussy cut my leaves whenever I'm adding them to my layout I always try to pinch these tips a little okay do this uh, it adds a lot of dimension to your project So I need to add a little bit more leaves to my cluster here but I will have to fussy cut them. So I think I have, you understand how what I mean by all of this, adding leaves. You can see how I added them on my original project, okay, here. So I've added a cluster here on behind this flower as well and some on top here. Okay, so that is uh, what you actually need to do. Just a little bit of green to break the uh, break the monotony of the page. Okay, and in the end, we will be using these chipboard stickers. And uh, for this one, I used love is here. And just let me see. Maybe this right. Our favorite places. Now these chipboard stickers are thick ones so you do not need to add anything on the back to lift them up because they are already like that okay so don't worry about lifting them up or anything you can also add some of these sequences in gold or bronze color and there we go our layout is finished I think just let me check yeah it's almost finished you can add sequence or uh, not if you want to add these sequences and there we go this is what you saw and this is what we made today one last thing <laughs> i'm so sorry some chalk paint and adding it on top of my flowers here just so that they tie up with my project okay so this is what we made there are some glue strands here and there i'll remove them later on but yeah this is our project i hope you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything but basically this is what uh, how you make a layout and uh, thank you for joining thank you so much for joining every one of you uh, see you once again I am so sorry if I have not been able to, you know, catch up with your comments during the live. And I am not that efficient when it comes to multitasking like so. So I'm so sorry for that. And once again, thank you all for joining me today. And have a great day. Bye-bye.